Do you ever treat any enemy Vietnamese troops? Officially or unofficially? I mean, uh, men that have been wounded in battle that you're that have been evacuated. No. Um, <clears throat> but when I was there, there were some people who, some uh, enemy troops, who were evacuated back to the the um, field, the hospital in Vuong Tau. Um, <clears throat> Civilians, the Australians had uh, <coughs> four hospitals in in South Vietnam. There were three civilian hospitals um, and one military. The there were two. There was one military and one civilian hospital in Vuong Tau. There was a civilian hospital west of Saigon at Bien Hoa, and there was a civilian hospital in the Delta. I'd evacuate civilian casualties or civilian ill to the civilian hospital in Vuong Tau. Um, there were Viet Cong who were evacuated, who were wounded, who were evacuated to our hospital because I saw them in the hospital when I went down there. <coughs> but unofficially, um, in, I actually did a sick parade for the North Vietnamese Regiment by not by mistake, it was by their careful planning, but because uh, <coughs> I went up one of the villages I used to do a clinic in was a village that was regarded as not being safe. <coughs> so I had a whole platoon escort me up to this village. And uh, about halfway through the, the sick parade, I, I became very concerned at how many young men there were in the in the in the sick parade, and because uh, there shouldn't have been any young men, they should have e either been in the government forces or on, on the other side. <coughs> and a lot of them had skin complaints and um, chest complaints. So <coughs> at the end, I asked the interpreter to interpret. With, with who, what clearly to me was an officer, with his bearing and everything else, and and in the end I dropped the interpreter and spoke in French, which I can could speak reasonably well, and it turned out I was doing the sick parade for the North Vietnamese Battalion, because their doctor was sick, and he told me the doctor was sick, so I, I gave him a present to give to the doctor, and I knew it was a female as they had the intelligence to know that I was coming up there, we had the intelligence to know that the medical officer of this battalion was a, a female, and it sounded like she had hepatitis, so I gave him some vitamin B and other stuff for what I had. And in return, he assured me of a safe trip back to the uh, battalion, which uh, we had. As soon as we got back, I raced up to the intelligence officer, and he raced me into the CO, and we looked at all, and the CEO said, you're correct, that's what would have happened. Um, and he said, you're very lucky. And I said, well, well he did promise. So that, the answer to that question is yes, but unofficially. <laughs> so I would have treated probably about 35 to 40 of, of their soldiers. It must have been a bit of a chilling realisation when it suddenly dawned on you. The most chilling thing was... When I came to the realisation of what we were doing, and I looked around to see what our blokes were doing, they were playing with all the kids. They'd suss the situation out as being quite safe, and so they'd, they were relaxing and giving handouts and playing ball and all the rest, because our soldiers were, were overall very good with the Vietnamese civilians. And, and I, I just thought, oh, what am I going to do? And I thought, I've got to play this uh, alone. So I didn't say a word to our mob until we were well out of it. And then I told the sergeant, and his response was, Jesus, is that where all those young blokes came from? I wondered where they were from. And I said, they weren't from the rice paddies. <laughs> and so that, that was a very, I mean, it's just one of those extraordinary things that can happen in a situation like that, that you sort of think, well, there it was.
Your interpreter must have realised what was going on pretty quickly. Oh, it was, the interpreter looked like he was going to have an attack of acute diarrhoea. I mean, it was, <coughs> the interpreter near the end was terrified. Just terrified. And it was a Vietnamese interpreter I had, not one of our Australian who could speak Vietnamese, because he mightn't have picked it up. Oh, yeah, the Vietnamese interpreter knew. And uh, so. What condition were those enemy sick in? It was very similar to one of my sick parades. That, in fact, that's what, <laughs> that's what I think initially twigged, not the number of young males, but the fact that I was seeing the same sorts of conditions that I was seeing in our soldiers back in camp. And I thought, well, hang on, this, this is not the usual sort of village clinic. And 